Hey everybody, final thoughts time for The Great City of Rome, which is great! This is a great, great game, uh, and I have really enjoyed it quite a bit. It doesn't quite make the top 10 of the year, of 2018 when it came out, but probably the top 20 or the top 25, and it's another feather in the cap of Matt Dunstan and Brett Gilbert, who, I gotta say, these two guys are definitely at their best when they are working together. I've played several of their games that they've designed with other folks and whatnot, and they've all been good, but there's just something about this combo of designers that really brings sweet, sweet sauce uh, to the uh, proceedings. I, you know, with Elysium is absolutely phenomenal. And actually, uh, just this week, I did a run through for another one of their games. It's on Kickstarter right now. Chocolate Factory, which really surprised the heck out of us. And uh, Elysium Chocolate Factory and Great City of Rome, these are three radically different games, and they're all really fantastic. They all have a very core, cool, central concept that just pulls everything together. They're fast, they're snappy, and um, very, very satisfying, very crunchy, a lot to grind on. Um, you know, off of what at first might seem like really simple, oh, just very binary, oh, this is the obvious thing I could, oh, wait, maybe it's not the best thing for me to do. Uh, because there are other considerations to make. It's not always as simple as, oh, I'll just take that one thing because it's obviously the best thing for me. Yeah, but if I take that, I'm leaving this other thing for you, or I'm not giving myself the extra thing I need to be able to actually leverage that. I mean, I could be talking about any of their games and doing it, but I mean, in Great City of Rome, this is a very sharp drafting game um, because of all the the levels of intricacy for how you use these cards. And now that, I've talked about this before, is in large part due to the fact that there's no better tile laying game than one that keeps you constrained and super duper tiny. I'm thinking of like a, a Warsaw. Uh, City of Ruins is another great example of this, where, yeah, it's just all you can do is a 4x4 four four grid. That's all you get to do. And you can't just Carcassonne style, oh, I'll just build off to the to the west until I hit the sunset because I've got all the freedom in the world. You have tough, tough choices. And the restrictions in this game, there's really primarily only two that you have to consider. If you're going to go for those insanely powerful aqueducts that really hobble you and make you have to kind of expand in kind of weird, awkward ways, um, plus trying to make your residential districts really big and contiguous, and then surround them with tons of really cool stuff. All sounds easy. Yes, clearly you should just do that. Except it doesn't quite work out that easily in play because your opponents get in the way. Because, okay, I just need to, if I just go here, I'll get enough bricks to be able to build this thing. But if I do that, I know you're just going to come here on the Emperor track and I won't even get the thing I need. So I've got to come here, which means i got to start siphoning away my cash. And it's really simple to think, oh, well, I'll just spend more cash. Who cares? Cash is king in this game. I mean, for all intents and purposes, functionally, every time you pick the far end of the Emperor's track, you have, for all intents and purposes, made one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight points. Or at least you haven't, but you have gotten eight points points worth of resources that you can use to build and achieve. Um, because, you know, if you want to build this, if you're all the way down here and you want to do production and you want to build, having to, well, not getting the bricks you need, not getting the, the cogs you need, means you are just siphoning our money or, you know, just hemorrhaging cash. And in most games, hey, that's what cash is for. You got to spend money to make points, right? No. In this game, you got to hold on to your precious money because this could be a sizable portion of your end score. Uh, you know, particularly if you get the temple that makes it worth even more, that makes money worth even more than normal. So every time you have to spend cash, that is just throwing victory away. And so, you always want to go to the end of the route, so you don't have to spend a penny. But that means you will not get what you want. But that's okay if you can build this thing smartly and keep your options open so, hey, whatever I get is going to work out well, and I'll just keep saving my cash and my sweet, sweet stars going for that. I mean, that's another cool thing, too. I love this influence system, this kind of push your luck. You know, the notion that in a two-player game, there's three opportunities through this deck to score. With more players, there's actually more, if I recall, um, you know, four or five. But when somebody wins, they have to throw away all of their influence, which makes it very tough for them to win the next one. And the next one's going to be worth twice as much. So yeah, go ahead and win this one. Knock yourself out. So uh, the really clever thing that there are times when, yeah, I could build this right now. I kind of want to build this right now. I've got the bricks. I need to build this right now. But if I build this, I'm going to get three stars that I'm going to have to throw away because I'm already winning the influence race. And I don't want to throw those away. So maybe I'll build this thing and literally waste two points worth of bricks. 
Oh, I mean, I, the, the game is just full of that stuff. And, you know, Jen and I, we have really enjoyed it quite a bit. Really nicely done. Now, I know there are a lot of people complaining that this game is just too dog ugly to even warrant my time. And, okay, you know what? Folks, you got me there. This is not a pretty game at all. I'm not going to blame the artist. I'm, I'm, you know, I mean, because this is actually a fairly nice cover. I like the cover art. I wish. Why doesn't? Why don't the art? Why don't the cards look like this? You know, I mean, because these are what we actually they are. They're blueprints. I mean, that would actually look kind of cool and stylistic. You know, I'm, you know, seeing this. Oh, I'm not actually building the thing. I'm just uh, laying out my blueprint or you know my my uh, architect sketch of what this entire district is supposed to be. I think that might look a little bit nicer. But then icons would pop out and they wouldn't look as good. It's a tough thing. I mean, I, but I have certainly seen other games that have this same type of thing. Oh, look, I'm, I'm laying cards out and I'm trying to build a little city that end up feeling more like a real place. I mean, it's kind of a shame these things don't actually have, you know, a kind of city detail with just the thing itself popping out so that when you put them all together, it looks like it's a contiguous city and yet I can still see the big pieces popping. I totally get it, folks. It looks ugly. It could have looked a lot better. I think the graphic design and the art direction on this game left a lot to be desired. And sure, if if your primary concern uh, for Euro gaming goodness is looks, Great City of Rome is not a great looking game, but it is a great playing game, and it scales well too. I, I look forward someday being able to play this as a three or four, but it works so well as a two player game. This Emperor track is brilliant. It's so much fun. How many points am I willing to give away to get what I want? And will I, what I want even work out? Can I get it built the way I need to get it built before time is up in this incredibly short game? I don't know, but that's why I look forward to finding out every time I play the Great City of Rome. And that's the run through, folks. Thanks very much for watching. Have a very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Oh, bye bye.